Good morning. <laughs> Takes a president, not a vice president. <laughs> That's senior vice president. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. I'm pleased to declare the 2011 commencement exercises for Quinnipiac University officially open. Would you please stand for the invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Hugh Vincent Dyer, Director of Campus Ministry and Catholic Chaplain. Peace be with you. Good and gracious God, be present to us now, perfecting within us the work you began when you called us into being out of nothingness and gave us dominion over and responsibility for all creation. Be our help. Free us from regretting our past. Deliver us from being fearful of the future. May we always be attentive simply to the present, the ever-present now, in which you meet us in love, in which we meet our neighbor in need, until all things are fulfilled in your eternal presence. In your name we pray, amen. Please be seated. It's my pleasure to introduce members of the platform party, which includes the honorary degree recipient who you will meet in a moment, members of the Board of Trustees, the President's Cabinet, the deans of our schools and college, and university clergy. It is now my honor to present Dr. John L. Leahy, President of Quinnipiac University, who will bring you greetings on behalf of the university community. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to all of you on this joyous occasion. To the class of 2011, I want to extend a particularly warm welcome and my heartiest congratulations to each and every one of you. You should all feel very proud of your accomplishments and most deserving of the degrees that will be conferred upon you. Class of 2011, in so many positive ways, you have left your mark on Quinnipiac University, and for that we thank you. And I predict that you will leave an even greater mark on the world that awaits you. The class of 2011 is without question one of the very best in Quinnipiac's history. A record number of you are going on to pursue graduate degrees in various fields of study, including medical, dental, and law schools, as well as numerous PhD programs. Today's graduates also displayed outstanding leadership within the Quinnipiac community. And no one better exemplifies the leadership roles you took on than Lou Venturelli, who served as your student body president for two years. I very much enjoy working with Lou, particularly in his role as a student representative on the university's board of trustees. I also want to extend my special thanks to the class of 2011 for your generous class gift. Three of today's graduates, Amanda Puglisi, Garrett Hogan, and Gabriella Cazola, played a major leadership role in raising the largest class gift ever. My thanks to all of you. Class of 2011, as you look back on all of your accomplishments, I'm sure that you will agree with me that you would not be graduating today if it were not for the help and support of two very important groups, the faculty at Quinnipiac and your families. Will the class of 2011 please rise and express your appreciation to the faculty and seated in front of you and your families and friends seated behind you. You may be seated. All of you are well aware of the dramatic changes and painful dislocations going on 
in the world economy and global society, including the many challenges and problems occurring today in the United States. Frankly, as a representative of my generation, the so-called baby boomers who are going to save the world, I feel more than a little bit guilty and embarrassed that we haven't turned the world or our country over to you in better condition. Notwithstanding that fact, I have every reason to be optimistic that based on your accomplishments at Quinnipiac, all of you will be successful in your chosen professions and role models in your families and communities, and that you will leave the world in much better condition for the generations that will follow you. Class of 2011, congratulations and best wishes to each and every one of you. I now call Mitch Album, Terry Goodwin, John Leahy, and Penny Leisring to come forward for the conferral of the honorary degree. Mitch Album, you won international acclaim as the author of Tuesdays with Maury, a tribute to your former professor's wisdom and a compilation of life lessons that has inspired millions of readers around the world. The conversations you had with Maury Schwartz, who was battling ALS, became the fodder for your memoir about the arc of this man's life and the simple truths he discovered as it came to an end. The book spawned an Emmy award-winning TV movie. In your Detroit Free Press column, you often highlight the lives of unsung heroes such as a Navy veteran who died homeless and without a friend or family member to mourn him. You began your career as a musician and later became an award-winning sports journalist. Today you host a radio show, appear regularly on ESPN, and continue to write songs, books, and plays. You also have founded four charities, including the Dream Fund and a Hole in the Roof Foundation, which help needy families. In appreciation of your insightful storytelling, your contributions to journalism, and your dedication to humanity, Quinnipiac University is pleased to confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters this 22nd day of May 2011. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Mitch. It's my pleasure to introduce Quinnipiac University's newest alumnus, Mitch Album, who will give the commencement address. Wow, that was the easiest degree I ever earned. <laughs> Faculty, family, friends, distinguished guests, and graduates. As a country preacher decides one Sunday, he's going to come out and put the fear of God into his congregation. So he writes a sermon, and he comes out, and he begins by saying, just remember, Everyone in this parish is going to die one day. And he notices this guy in the front is kind of smiling. And he looks at him and he says, why are you so happy? The guy says, I'm not from this parish. I'm just visiting my sister. <laughs> well, for the last four years, you've been part of a group too. But when you walk out today, you'll become more like the man in that story. And it'll be up to you to decide where you belong. It's a momentous occasion. So much so that I want to warn you to be prepared for something very strange to happen today. When you break from this ceremony, you'll hug your family and friends, you'll shake hands with countless well-wishers, but if you look very carefully out of the crowd, you'll see one more person coming towards you. This person will look vaguely like you. His hair will be a little thinner, her face will have some more lines, his middle may be thicker from too little time to exercise. Her dress size may be larger from having born children. 
This person will walk straight towards you, ignoring others because this person cannot be seen by anyone else. This person will grab your hand, look you in the eye, and then whisper something in your ear. And what this person will say will be the most important words you'll ever hear. Because this person is you, 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years from now. I know because it happened to me. This is the brief story that my future self came back to tell me on the day I graduated, just as you're doing here. The year was 1979. I had a favorite professor in college. His name was Maury Schwartz. He stood about yay high, silver hair, green eyes, crooked tooth smile, wonderful way of making you feel like you were the first student he'd ever taught. I met him on the first day of classes, walked into his class. There were nine kids in the room. Being a typical freshman, I immediately sized up the situation and said, no, 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 no. This is much too small a class. If I cut it, they'll know I'm not here. And I was actually leaving to drop the class when he began to call roll. And one of the problems when your last name begins with A. <laughs> so he said, Mitchell album. And I was half out and half in, could have left. I slid back in, raised my hand, said here. And he said, is it Mitch or Mitchell, which do you prefer? No one had ever asked me that question before. So I said, well, Mitch, my friends call me Mitch. Mitch it is then, he said. And Mitch, yeah, I hope one day you'll think of me as your friend. So I knew cutting the class was out of the question at that point. <laughs> but that began this amazing relationship that spawned all four years. I took every class he offered. I majored in sociology on account of him. And finally, on that graduation day, when we had become more like an uncle and a nephew, after all that time, I bought him a gift, a briefcase with his initials on it. I handed it to him. Never bought a present for a teacher before. He flipped it all around, looked it up and down, began to cry a little bit, and he said, Mitch, you're one of the good ones. Promise me you'll stay in touch. I will, I said. Promise. OK, I promise. Say it in a sentence. <laughs> OK, I promise I'll stay in touch, Maury. I promise I'll stay in touch. And then I graduated, like you're doing today, went off into the world, as you're going to do today. And I proceeded to break that promise every day, every week, every month, and every year for 16 years. 16 years without even a phone call. Why? I got busy. I got ambitious. I got involved with my career. I got caught up with my life, making money, making a name for myself, doing things that always seemed a little bit more important than keeping up with people who mattered from my past. And so 16 years had passed when one night I happened to be flipping on the television set. And there on the screen came the Nightline program. And I saw a sickly looking, white haired version of my old professor, Maury Schwartz, talking about what it was like to die. And only through that chance encounter, watching that TV program, did I realize someone from my past now only had a few months left to live. I went to visit him. I thought it would be a one-time visit. But I was so taken with how he was dying. I watched him try to lift a piece of tomato up into his mouth, and it fell off the fork. He lifted it again. It fell off the fork. He lifted it again. Five minutes to finally get into his mouth and chew and swallow. But he never complained. Instead, he asked me about what I was learning in life, what I was doing for my community. And by the time I left that night, I realized I was 37 years old, perfectly healthy. He was 78 years old and dying. And he was 10 times happier and more content with his life than I was. What's the matter with the picture? And I began to go back. Following Tuesday, next Tuesday, the next Tuesday, and all the Tuesdays that Maury had left in his life, to try to find the answer to that one question. What do we know when we're really staring our death in the face that puts all the rest of our life into perspective? And wouldn't it be great to know it now when we're young enough and healthy enough to do something about it? And I want to share just a couple quick lessons that I learned by Maury's side there on those Tuesdays. Things that you may be thinking about right now as your future self comes over the hill to greet you. One, 
age, aging. I'm sure many of you right now already feel you're too old. You haven't made your mind up. You don't know what you're going to do. Should have done it when you were 14. Let's face it, you're gonna find out that there are two things in America that you can't be enough of, thin enough or young enough. We spend all our time in this country trying to pretend we're not getting older. Guys, you know, you, you start working out. We used to call it playing ball, now it's working out. Women, if you start shopping for food for your family, start reading that little black and white box on the thing and calorie count and carbohydrates. Who used to read before they eat? Now you can't buy anything unless you read. And men get a little older, they start losing their hair, they start flopping it over onto the other side. Next thing you know, you're in your 40s, your 50s, and you're getting your tummy tucked, and your lipo sucked, and your face lifted, and you're dumping on your first husband and your wife, and next thing you know, you're riding around a little red sports car listening to rap music and saying, I've been listening to it for years, I think it's fabulous. <laughs> All because we don't want to get older. We envy the young their youth. And I realized here I was going to see this older dying man as this younger healthy man. And so one Tuesday, I asked Maury, how do you keep from envying me my youth. How do you keep from saying, how come he gets to be healthy and I'm not? How come he gets to walk and I can't? How come he gets to be young and I'm old? And he looked at me and he shrugged and he said, Mitch, I don't look at aging that way. To me, age is not a competition. Inside me is every age I've ever been. 10-year-old, 20-year-old, 37 like you, but also a 50, 60, 78-year-old man. When it's time for me to behave with the wonder of a child, I can do that. When it's time for me to talk to a college student who thinks the world's going to end because her boyfriend broke up with him, ah, I can do that too. I remember what it was like. But when it's time for me to be 78 years old with all the wit and wisdom of my years on earth, then I can do that too. So why should I be envious of where you are? I've already been where you are. You should be envious of me. I got 40 years on you. And he was right. Maury looked at aging as sort of like gaining interest on your principal. Every day you get up, there's a little bit more. And it's a much healthier way to go through life than dreading your 29th birthday, 39th, 49th, 59th. So keep that in mind on aging. Money, it's an issue for all of you. How are you gonna earn it? How much do you need? It was interesting to note that when I visited Maury on Tuesdays, there were other people who came occasionally and I observed their behavior. Very few of them knew how to deal with a dying man. So they would have a strategy. They would stand outside his door and they would say, I'm gonna tell him funny jokes, show him pictures, upbeat, upbeat, upbeat. Then the door would open, they'd go inside, the door would close and they'd come out an hour later in tears but they'd be crying about their job, their divorce, their life, their problems. And they said, I don't know, I went in, I tried to cheer him up a little bit, but next thing I know, he started asking me questions and I started talking and then he asked me more and I really started talking. Next thing I know, I was crying. I went in to try to cheer him up, but he ended up cheering me up. And finally, I saw this happen so many times, I walked in the morning, I said, I don't get it. If ever anyone had finally earned the right to say, let's not talk about your problem. Let's talk about my problems. Would be you. You've hit the mother load of sympathy here. You're dying. Why don't you take advantage of it? And he looked at me as if I had just stepped off a spaceship and he said, Mitch, why would I ever take from people like that? Taking just makes me feel more like I'm dying. Giving makes me feel like I'm living. Giving makes me feel like I'm living. It is a profound little sentence. It also rhymes, so it's easy to remember. <laughs> giving makes me feel like I'm living. And you know it's true because you'll find out taking will never make you feel alive. Oh, it's the basis of capitalism in Madison Avenue. We have commercials. You take this, you'll feel better. Put this deodorant soap under your arm, you'll feel alive. Get this car, you'll feel alive. But it's not true. We're all kids on Christmas morning. You ever see a 10-year-old on Christmas morning? Put a box in front of them. This is great. What else you got? We're always. How many of you have seen the movies? Anytime you ever see in a movie when a guy is dying and everybody gathers around to hear his final thoughts, has he ever, in any film you've ever seen, with his dying breath, ever uttered a sentence like, Bring me the big screen television sets? 
I just want to touch it one more time. <laughs> no, you laugh because it's preposterous. But now think, in that final moment, in that final moment, that final drop of sand through the hourglass, if all you own is of no comfort to you, all you've acquired gives you no peace, it's not even in the room with you. It's in the country house, it's in the garage, it's in the bank. If in that final moment all that matters is that the people you love and the people you've touched are with you and you can hold their hand and tell them what they meant to you, then what makes you think in all the other drops of sand through the hourglass that isn't what's important too? It is. Keep that in mind as you decide how much you need in life to be happy. Finally, the last visit I had with Maury, he was very weak. His body was just a husk. You had to turn his head just to have him look at you. I had to lean in closely just to hear his final words. And he said to me, I want to ask you a favor. Sure, I said. After I'm dead, come visit me at my grave. OK, I said. I was going to do that anyhow. Not the way everybody else comes. They drive up, they get out, they leave the car running, they put some flowers down, they get back in, they drive away. Plan on sticking around a while. Bring a blanket. Bring some sandwiches. And I want you to talk to me about your life, about what's going on. And I said, wait a minute. You want me to come to a cemetery, have a picnic at your tombstone, and talk to the air. Exactly, he said, just like we're talking now. I said, well, Maury, let's face it, it's not going to be like we're talking now because you won't be able to talk back. And he looked at me as if I were being very naive. And he said, well, Mitch, I'll make you a deal. After I'm dead, you talk, I'll listen. And I realized after he finally died, and I listened to that sentence over and over again on a tape, that in that sentence is everything he ever tried to teach me as a teacher and everything I would try to get across to you as young graduates. And it's simply this. If you spend your life making time for people, giving to other people, sharing yourself with other people, then when you're gone many, 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 many years from now, you want be a hundred percent gone. You will live on inside the brains and hearts and minds of everyone you've ever touched. And this is how, as Maury said, death ends a life but not a relationship. The relationship can go on. It's like dropping a penny in a piggy bank, right? When you drop a penny inside a piggy bank, you can't see it anymore, right? For all intents and purposes, it's gone from this earth. You can't touch it. You can't see it. But when you pick up that bank and shake it, you hear it. This is how one life touches another and another and goes on. But, and this is the big but of this little talk, so if you're sleeping in the back, now's the time to wake up. But you must invest in these relationships with people if you want them to go on after you're gone. So if you spend all of your days doing nothing but work, as I've spent far too many of mine, if you spend all day in front of the makeup mirror trying to get beautiful or at the gym trying to get buff, if you spend all day just trying to get on a Forbes 500 list or some magazine cover, then when you die, many, many years from now, you better plan on being 100% dead. Dead with a capital D. Because your money, they'll just fight over after you're gone. They always do. Your beautiful body, no matter how buff, is going to rot in the ground right next to the fat guy. Your list of accomplishments, no matter how impressive, will pale in comparison to the next young hotshot who comes along. But that one thing that you have in your power right now, that one thing that separates you from everyone you're sitting next to and will separate you from everyone on this planet, that voice that is the sum of you and everything you've learned and you've done and you've experienced and you've loved, you didn't spend any time giving away. You were too busy taking to feel alive. Share with others, touch others, give yourself to others. This is what my future self came back to tell me on the day that I graduated. Don't lose sight of who you are. 
Don't stop dreaming big. Don't let people tell you to get real if getting real is a code word for getting cynical, getting hard, getting insensitive, or getting too busy for people who truly matter in your life, your children, your spouse, your friends, your family, your old professors. When later today that future you comes walking towards you and he or she whispers in your ear, this is what you wanted to say. You've helped others. You've stayed true to your ideals. You've lived with a whole heart. You've touched the world. I hope and pray that you hear this today and that the visitor from your future is smiling. You have the chance to make it so with every decision you make from this moment forward. Seize it with vigor, young friends. Seize it with energy. Seize it with compassion. And always seize it with love. Good luck and God bless you all. Thank you, Mitch. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Hans Bergman, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Greetings from the, from the faculty and staff and students of the College of Arts and Sciences. Will the marshals please direct the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences to the platform? <clears throat> Zachary S. Abrams. Justine H. Adolphus Garrick. Adam J. Altschuler. Michael P. Amanti. Melissa M. Ambrosio. Megan E. Ames. Lisa D. Amore. Zachary W. Anderson. Demario J. Anderson. David L. Onstead. Janelle G. Armentano. Caitlin M. Armstrong. Rebecca A. Arsenault. Jerkush J. Atem. Amanda N. Owen. Danielle L. Auerbach. Robert W. Ayers III. Kristen E. Babowitz. Aaron M. Beyer. Sam E. Baldwin. Ariel L. Barber. Jamie G. Barnstone, Evan Richard Belial, Tamara D. Bender, Alexa N. Bennett, Kevin Benzing, Deanna L. Bergstein, Danielle E. Bissell, Kathleen Margaret Blauvelt, Thaddeus L. Beauchene, Christine E. Bolwage, Christine E. Borg, Kimberly B. Bornstein, Karen A. Bors, Lynn Maria A. Boxel, Kimberly Brzezinski, Elena A. Caliendo, Emily T. Callahan. Sarah Samantha N. Canieso. Sherelle D. Carr. Lauren A. Caselli. Amanda S. Cassidy. Nicole T. Castiglione. Richard Lee Celebri. Nicole E. Shelley, 
Emily S. Chernick, Tabor A. Shashakli, Matthew B. Sipolowski, Kristen E. Sinkyu, Elizabeth L. Clark, Aaron Elizabeth Clark, Mary Kate E. Connolly, Amanda M. Corraza, Ashley Corral, Kimberly G. Corby, Jeffrey T. Coutts, Jenna L. Crooms, Bree E. Cuff, Michelle L. Cummins, Gina Curcio, Stephen, D, Stephen T. DeFalco, Brianna E. Deardoff, Brittany N. Franco de, de Baez, Danielle Y. Demers, Catherine Irene DeMezzo, Alexandra C. DeStefano, Garrett M. DeVries, Brendan K. Doherty, Brian J. Donellan, Michelle A. Eagle, Eva E. Efron, Colleen H. Elmer, Kimberly A. Emhart, Gina A. Favat, Jonathan A. Fetchik, Alyssa L. Fight, Thomas M. Fiola, Carl J. Ferdenzi, Laura E. Ferretti, Leah M. Ferry, Brittany M. Finoya, Ariel L. Ariel R. Fisher, Laura A. Fitzpatrick, Ali Capetta, Erica M. Fleischman, Michelle L. Four, Marissa J. Fortino, Sarah R. Fredo, Brian C. Fredrickson, Jesse E. A. Jesse A. Gashion. Vincent A. Gaiata, Maria L. Gagliardi. Maria L. Gagliardi is the winner of the Alumni Association Academic Achievement Award from the College of Arts and Sciences. Marina is a, is a criminal justice major who earned a 3.98 GPA. She's a member of the Quinnipiac University Honors Program, Alpha Kappa Delta, International Sociology Honor Society, Order of Omega Greek Honor Society, Pre-Law Society, and the 2010 Chapter Excellence Chair of Phi Sigma Sigma, Zeta Zeta. Previous honors and awards include Dean's List, 2008 recipient of the Outstanding Academic, uh, Academic Achievement Award as a freshman in the College of Arts and Sciences, the 2009 recipient, the 2010 recipient of the Outstanding Achievement Award, a recipient of the Joan Phillips Gordon Prize in Sociology, Greek Academic Excellence Award for the highest cumulative GPA, third place in the College of Arts and Sciences undergraduate prize competition, and a member of Who's Who Among, American stu among Students in American Universities and Colleges. Marina will be attending Quinnipiac University School of Law in the fall. And she is the daughter of Paul and Cynthia Gagliardi of Southington, Connecticut, with a sister, Lisa. Congratulations, Marina. Miguel A. Garcia III. <laughs> Tiffany A. Gargano. Jennifer F. Garrett. Brian B. G. Jenna E. Gallardi. Ida Jaimo. Danielle E. Gibbon. Jakob G. Gablaki. Gianna L. Gleason, 
Timothy M. Glennon, Zachary R. Godbout, Samuel N. Goldberg, Alicia Nicole Golombeski, Faith E. Greenwald, Jennifer M. Griffin, Elizabeth M. Haggerty, Chadwick J. Harris Williams, Jennifer E. Hartman, Danielle J. Howe, Adam C. Hebert, Kristen A. Hebert, Catherine T. Heinemann, Molly S. Heinzelman, Brett T. Herlihy, Michael Hershenfeld, Nicole S. Hirsch, Garrett M. Hogan, Adam C. Horgan, Bethany S. Huard, J. Brendan Huber, Danielle E. Hunter, Vedran Huskick, Laura E. Ianati, Therese N. Irving, Nadja A. Ivanova, Megan N. Jacob, Kathleen A. Janoski, go. Angela I. Julian, Courtney L. Kaminsky, Gregory T. Kane, Eric R. Kelly, Caitlin A. Kelly, Kevin Kelly, Grania Kiel, Beth K. King, Melanie B. Kinney, Matthew E. Kulf, Christina A. Kruger, Colin W. Cusisto, Matthew R. Lobonia, Sarah A. Labrode, Victoria J. Lacus, Stephen A. Landis, Jacqueline Rosano Lara, Jamie A. Lazarus, Jennifer A. Lehman, Jacob M. LeBreton, Christina A. Leonelli, Jessica A. Levy, Aaron S. Lewis, Peyton J. Livingston, Alyssa A. Lagado, Maria Cristina Lopez, Tracy N. Lorenzo, Caitlin M. Love, Brittany Ann McPhee, James P. Marr, Teresa J. Mayorano, Alex S. Mako, Jessica L. Mann, Christopher J. Martin, Elizabeth Jane Martin, Gina M. McAllister, Kristen M. McDonnell, Colin P. McGowan, Corey L. McNulty, Jeffrey, M. Jeffrey A. Mita, Joshua A. Milikowski, Kyla M. Miles, Gabriella M. Mirabella, Sarah Elizabeth Molar, Tiffany M. Montesion, Jason A. Monroe, Kristen E. Murcott, Kelly Murphy, Jennifer L. Nasta, Nicole R. Nathan, Ariel R. Nathanson, Shannon C. Navroth, Dimitar T. Nadenoff, Victor Nieves, Rebecca J. Nuola, Danielle M. Nizardo, Amanda N. Nunez, Jonathan P. Nye, 
Timothy S. Okazi, Danielle G. Oliveri, Shanice J. Owen, Jacqueline A. Parent, Lauren E. Pastusak, Bianca E. Payne, Lauren Elizabeth Peacock, Rachel M. Phillips, Caden S. Pizak, Carla Pose, Cara Poses, Ann K. Polson, Lorella A. Parelli, Nicholas M. Presto, Melanie J. Price, Stephen M. Pulaski, Ronald Raganella Jr., Jonathan G. Rapport, Kaylee Rector, Melissa A. Riley, Amanda May J. Rapoli, Danielle M. Riley, Justin M. Roberts, Alexis M. Rodriguez, Megan E. Rogers, Michelle S. Rome, Nicholas A. Rossetti, Carrie E. Russell, Jessica L. Russo, Justin D. Rutty, Kristen M. Samuels, Michael A. Santa Croce, Samantha S. Sardella, Samantha P. Schlem, Lindsay A. Schneeberger, Justin P. Schneider, Jamie L. Sebastian, Kimberly F. Sarapika, Ashley Rose Sherman, Anna A. Shevchenko, Jacqueline Mara Schuster, Amanda W. Signorelli, Caroline A. Silva, Megan N. Silva, Jennifer J. Smith, Rachel L. Solomon, Ariana M. Spatadol, Rebecca K. Spigner, Derek J. Stanley, Sarah E. Stevenson, Daniela M. Stitso, Brian J. Straub, Jacob M. Sweet, Christina M. Sabolch, Alexandria I. Tarando, Jenna M. Tuhi, Christopher P. Torchin, Jacqueline M. Torella, Stephen Itore Torquati, Jenna L. Tracy, Brooke Elizabeth Tunney Farley, Stephanie Rose Torto, Bridget Torini, Bailey C. Tuthill, Deontay E. Twyman, Jillian E. Ubedes Gonzalez, Adolphine Kumukobwa, Felicia Diane Valentino, Louis F. Venturelli, Samantha N. Voltmer, Jenna L. Wallace, Lauren B. Wank, Christine M. Watkins, Amy E. Wayman, Travis A. Weiss, Jason H. Weiss, Franklin J. Wilkes, Eric, Eric C. Wilson, Kelsey N. Wilson, Lindsay M. Wilson, Benjamin J. C. Wolfson, 
Jacqueline M. Wood. Melissa M. Yi. Alexandra M. Zaka. Richard C. Zajak. Elena Zaklis. John H. Zeiser. Amy L. Zurlo. Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the marshals please direct the candidates for the Bachelor of Science, College of Arts and Sciences? Alfredo Enrique Bonelli Gorbia, Ashley E. Bro, Alessandra Capizzi, William Cipolli, Deline A. Court, Michelle S. Kudermarsh, Nicole T. DiMaria. Melissa L. DiBacco, Philip D. Dudley, Stephanie M. Fava, Emerson R. Frank, Thomas J. Gallant, Jr., Bridget H. Garrity, Michael T. Germanario, Tiffany A. Johnson, Eric R. Capuza, Andrew J. Curlis, Kristen M. Lucibello, Eric Lai, Alicia R. Marino, Miriam E. Martin, Meredith A. McKenna, Catherine T. McNamara, Ann Maluski. Ryan P. Murphy, Verezo M. Nundo, Nicole M. Olson, Carly Jean Phillips, Laura M. Pyers, Lee B. Poirier, Pamela R. Rizzo, Kristen T. Rooney, Kayla L. Sokolsky, Christine J. Sinigan, James W. Spicer, Sarah L. St. Jean, Gregory J. Tempesta, Anthony Joseph Tundo, Christopher J. Wilson, Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science, College of Arts of Science. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations. It's now my privilege to introduce Dr. Matthew O'Connor, Dean of the School of Business.
Will the marshals please direct the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science from the School of Business to the dais? Bianca Abella. Bianca will receive her diploma from her father, John Abella, a member of the Quinnipiac University Board of Trustees. <laughs> Daniel Aquafreda. Julianne M. Arts. Anthony Agostino. Elizabeth A. Albanese. Robert T. Aliano. Ethan S. Anderson, Catherine E. Andre, Victoria I. Andriola, Matthew N. Andriuli, Tracy Lynn Annunziato, Daniela Apollyana, John A. Armas. David A. Armenti. Ashley L. Barberi. Blake M. Barone. Michael A. Bartlett. Jake Bauer. Katrin Becker. Brendan M. Beckett. Eric M. Belgard. Devin C. Berlin, Adam A. Bernard, Amanda K. Bylas, Lindsey J. Blumberg, Jessica A. Borislow, Joshua B. Bornstein, Abigail R. Bowersox. Michael L. Brandman, Thiago C. Braun, Douglas F. Bray, Lawrence W. Bremer, Ryan F. Brochu, Kimberly Brohan, Charles Marcin Brooks. <laughs> Christopher M. Brower, Ryan T. Brown, Thomas J. Burke, Benjamin C. Burnett, Nicholas A. Caffiero, Samantha M. Campbell, Jose D. Canelos, Michael V. Cantamessa. Michael T. Carbone, Jr. Lauren S. Carroll. Samantha L. Carter. Gerard M. Cash. Cassandra R. Castronovo. Dina Marie Celeste. Allison L. Chapman. Sarah W. Chase. Michael N. Chobor. Christina M. Cianci. Janine R. Clairville. Daniel R. Coliani.
Thomas J. Coleman, Stephanie Colinelli, Valencia Constant, Crystal R. Cook, Perry P. Corin, Colin J. Cor, Nicholas A. Costa, Michael J. Kalam, William F. County, Thomas E. Coyne, Bradley L. Cronister, John T. Crowley, Amanda E. Curtin, Dean R. Zerwanka, Samantha M. Diorio, Caitlin E. Dalterio, Timothy K. Daddy, Kevin M. Dauber, Suad Dawuni, Kristen Y. DeCamp, Dominic DeMauro, Raymond G. Decker III, Gina R. Del Greco, Alice M. Delafave, Daniel P. Dempsey, Melissa A. DeSalvo, Lindsay A. Desiderio, Jose A. Diaz, Travis J. De Giacoma, John J. DeStasio, Nicholas R. DeStefano, Tamara J. Doherty, Christina Dominguez, Alexa E. Dong, Jenna M. Donnellan, Megan S. Doyle, Christine L. Drummy, Christopher P. Eglin, Kristen R. Epsky, James D. Eustis, Daniel Evar, Jacqueline A. Fay, Benjamin R. Farina, John M. Farina, William F. Flanagan, Ryan W. Flom, Tony J. Foley, Brian E. Foran, Timothy B. Ford, Brittany L. Fuscus, Lauren M. Fraser, Douglas Friedman, Patrick D. Friel, Jeffrey A. Furtado, Robin Gallup, Christopher L. Ganim, Alexander B. Garcia, Joanna M. Gardini, Michael J. Geronimo, Jason J. Jamboy, Brendan C. Gibbs, Grant E. Golden, Bridget Golia, Maria Golabenko, Nisa S. Goville, Aaron E. Greco, Patrick F. Green, Abigail M. Grover, Anya Grund, Leslie Paquette Grunwald, David D. Garino, Joshua M. Haber, Amber Michelle Hackman, Zachary J. Hansen, 
Kenneth C. Hartford. Jonathan R. Haspelair. Tyler W. Helian. Erica L. Heller. Nathan R. Hirsch. Daniel F. Hodgson. Cameron A. Hogan. Jessica Cynthia Hogan. Lorene E. Hotchkiss. Caitlin Marie Husser. Christopher A. Ian Aquino. Taylor A. Jackson. Jason B. Jacobs. Christopher M. Jonas. Carolyn C. Johnson. Juanita Jones. Rebecca L. Joseph. Dimitri S. Calavrosis. Matthew J. Kapnick. Johan A. Carl Hagen. Colleen E. Kelly. Kevin Patrick Kelly. Matthew T. Keough. Caitlin M. Kirby. John M. Klein. Nathan D. Kolodny. Alexandra S. Conspor. Daniel J. Corman. Dylan J. Kraus. Timothy M. Karowski. Nicole M. Quishan. Ryan Lally. Chelsea R. Lamana. Alexa Landino. Jennifer Laspada. Joseph Christopher Lazarchuk. Alexander S. Leach. Joshua Caleb Lemire. Lorena Lima. Michael L. Lombardi. Peter F. Longo. Brandon A. Lopez. David Lacino. Elizabeth C. Luizzi. Peter P. Lupi. Mary T. Lyons. Ryan P. McGinnis. Ryan M. Maloney. Andra Ann Mandeville. Adi S. Mentopoulos. Dwayne K. Mars. Caitlin E. Martin. David Z. Massa. Michelle L. Massami. Lauren B. Matuzic. Carl Maas. David N. Mavrikos. Andrew M. Meyernick. Danielle Muzika. Sarah E. McCarthy. Daniel J. McDonough. Patrick Edwin McGann. Alicia McGlynn. Christopher M. McGuire. Matthew J. McInerney. Matthew R. McLaughlin. Timothy P. McMinn. Ryan P. McNamara. Kyle J. McNulty. Kirk T. Medrahowski. 
Aaron D. Malikian. Andrew R. Merrick. Joshua I. Messina. Brian J. Mickelson. Alyssa Christine Mills. Janine Catherine Minerva. Michael D. Materatunda. Corinne J. Mitchell. Dennis P. Mitchell. Rebecca Montanez. Lauren Montemero. Jacqueline A. Montone. Danielle Moskowitz. Richard L. Mulry. Megan A. Murray. Michael P. Musselman. Ethan J. Nadell. Farah Nakuk. Nicholas S. Napolitano. Eva Nadenova. Renee N. Norby. Stephanie M. Norris. Pamela E. Newjame. Julia M. Nuara. Elizabeth A. Nussbaum. Sarah E. O'Brien. Sarah is the recipient of the Alumni Association Academic Achievement Award for the School of Business. She is also a recipient of the President's Scholarship Award. Sarah E. O'Brien is an accounting major who earned a 3.99 GPA. She is a member of the QU Accounting Society. Previous honors and awards include Dean's List and recipient of the 2010 Bloom Shapiro Accounting Student Scholarship, Beta Gamma Sigma. Sarah is also a recipient of this year's President Scholarship Award. Sarah is currently enrolled as a full-time student in the five-year MBA in Healthcare Management Program at Quinnipiac University. Congratulations, Sarah. John F. Oppenheimer. Jessica F. Oros. Alexandra E. Ortega. Emily L. Osga. Robert J. Osterman. Michaela R. Olette. Christopher A. Olathema. Adam D. Page. Krista M. Palazzo. Lucas J. Pally. Christopher M. Palmer. Alessandra Pano. Christina M. Pano. Richard M. Paoletto III. Louise A. Paolillo. Paul A. Paonessa, Jr. Stephen M. Parker. Carrie L. Paris. Evan J. Pollock. Nick Pelican. Frederick J. Penn. Brett Leslie Petty. Rachel N. File. Evan R. Philippi. Michael Joseph Piscadlo. Patrick L. Pizzacetta. Allison M. Pluck. Madeline A. Papelka. Layla K. Pratt. Elizabeth A. Promutico. Catherine T. Prezzuti. Stephanie E. Pritchard. Peter M. Quigley. 
Aliza A. Rabinowitz, David E. Ratner, Scott W. Relier, Patrick H. Reynolds, George L. Ricciardelli, Amanda G. Richards, Derek J. Rotundi, Daniel P. Ryan, Ramon A. Sanchez, Alexis M. Santiago, Vincent P. Santarella III, Robert J. Scarinzi, Kristen M. Scarpa, Eric K. Schaefer, Joshua L. Schilberg, Brian C. Schultz, Matthew M. Schwartz, Kristen R. Schweihart, Samantha K. Sumeka, Samantha J. Scoutless, Justin W. Seewald, Lauren Servidio, Michael T. Shankman, Liam W. Shea, Stacy J. Sherman, Serena Sidowi, Fabrice P. Silva, Colby A. Sylvia, Kevin R. Simon, Kimberly Ashton Simone, Laura M. Sinclair, Allison C. Skidmore, Jennifer M. Skinner, Kyle S. Sloan Rossiter, Shantia Marie Smith, Ronaldo G. Sogluizzi, Jenna A. Spadaro, Justin P. Spagnolo, Michael J. Spinoza, Tolly Staffenson, Christopher L. Stanton, Lizanne Steiner, Josette Strianisi, Edward Strobino III, Matthew P. Sullivan, Bonnie L. Zaviridop, Erica A. Svoboda, Jessica L. Suchek, Carrie A. Tarr, Christopher M. Thornton, Jason J. Tishy, Lauren R. Torelli, Bridget R. Todd, Kristen M. Todd, Marcelo Tosti, Paul H. Touchette, Frank Tufano, Rodrigo Uchoa, Laura E. Ulnas, Gloria A. Valentino, Thomas J. Valentino, Jr., Robert F. Vasquez, Nicholas G. Voss, Jonathan Velez, Pamela M. Vitani, Benjamin L. Wald, Toki Ann Wallace, Caitlin Elizabeth Walsh, Caitlin T. Walsh, Matthew M. Walsh, Catherine Elizabeth Wankel, 
Asher, Asher Q. Watson. Siobhan Elise Webster. Timothy E. Wells. Karen Wonder. Paul M. Williams. J. S. Wadka. Stephanie R. Woodson. Lindsay N. Yoya. Jesse N. Young. Francesca M. Yupa. Alexander S. Zetarico. Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science from the School of Business. By, by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees. <laughs> I think our economy needs that enthusiasm. <laughs> by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. It's my privilege to introduce Lee Camlet, Dean of the School of Communications. Will the marshals please escort the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts from the School of Communications to the podium? <laughs> Jenna L. Adams. Rhiannon D. Adams. Brett M. Ainsley. Philip J. Astuto. Molly M. Ayer, Evan W. Baker, Nicholas S. Bartlett, Heather L. Beaumont, Mira E. Beckford, Timothy A. Behrens, Rachel S. Benelli, Caitlin R. Bermudez, Sarah T. Bernabeo, Sarah E. Bile, Alexander F. Birch, Jamie L. Blatt, Jenna L. Block, Brittany L. Boyer, Julia M. Bucaneri, Lisa M. Buchanan, Colin McGuire Butterfield, Thomas E. Buto, Brian E. Caffaro, Kelsey D. Cantor, Thomas E. Carey, Jordana Marie Caradillo, Joseph G. Caragatti, Christina M. Casanelli, Robin L. Casella, Alexander D. Chase, Justin R. Ciliento, Jenny F. Connell, Galen E. Conover, Christina Lee Conrado, Stephanie M. Coppola, Kaylin H. Corrigan, Sean P. Coughlin, Gregory J. Covelli, Equa Quadjerba Crawfee, Gabriella M. Cazola, Brittany N. Dano, Kelly A. Davies, Andrew M. Davis, 
Brittany L. Davis. Sherry S. Davis. Courtney M. Day. Alyssa C. Della Camera. Alyssa Della Camera is a print journalism and Spanish major who earned a 3.95 GPA. She is a member of Sigma Delta Pi, a National Collegiate Hispanic Honor Society, Lambda Pi Eta, Communication Studies Honor Society, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Previous honors and awards include the 2010 recipient of the Outstanding Academic Achievement Award from the School of Communications, 2011 Spanish Essay Contest winner from the College of Arts and Sciences, 2011 recipient of the Audra Award for Excellence in Writing from the School of Communications. Alyssa secured a job in management at a company in her hometown in Nashua, New Hampshire. Alyssa's hobbies include reading and writing. Alyssa is the daughter of Dan and Cindy of Della Camera of Nashua, New Hampshire. She has a brother, Michael. Congratulations. <laughs> Tracy M. Diamond. <laughs> Tiffany C. Diorio. Mark S. DePola, Melissa A. DeSalvo, Mallory Frazier Dixon, Mary Catherine Dolan, Alexandra M. Dominguez, Sean M. Doucette, Brianna C. Dudas, Matthew P. Durigan, Brooke A. Eater, Caitlin M. Edson, Allison G. Ehrenreich, Simone N. Elliott, Michael L. Esposito, Amanda R. Eugenio, Caitlin E. Fayford, Francesca A. Ferretta, Casey Gina Ferricelli, Alisa Ferraza, Ian M. Fisher, David P. Fitzgerald, Ryan E. Fitzgerald, Shannon P. Fox, Jacob M. Friedman, Samuel D. Friedman, Catherine A. Fusco, Stephanie Ann Gerlight, Michelle E. Gilday, Kyle M. Georgie, Alexandra Giorgio, Brian R. Glowacki, Matthew J. Goddard, Caitlin Michelle Joanne Goldberg, David B. Goldman, Gabriel M. Gomez, Taylor J. Graham, John A. Greenlaw, Samantha V. Greitzer, Dominic P. Grenga, Kathleen Mary Griso, Kathleen Mary Griso is a public relations and Spanish major who earned a 3.95 GPA. She is a member of Alpha Chi Omega Sorority, Sigma Delta Pi Spanish Honor Society, Lambda Pi Eta Communications Honor Society, Order of Omega Greek Honor Society, and a tutor at Quinnipiac University's Learning Center. Previous honors and awards include School of Communications Highest Achievement Award and the Aria D. Schoonmaker Spanish Award. Kathleen secured employment with a media firm in Manhattan, New York, Kathleen's hobbies include reading, shopping for shoes and handbags, <laughs> writing and managing Fabulosity, a lifestyle, Mac fashion, and beauty blog. Kathleen is the daughter of Peter and Mary Jo Grisa of Long Valley, New Jersey. She has a younger brother, Peter. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> 
Megan A. Hakim. Amy S. Hardman. Katie B. Harris. Victoria L. Hart. Corey Herbert Hirsch. Kevin C. Hillier. Brittany E. Howes. Frederick Hoxie. Catherine Shu. Matthew S. Hudak. Michael J. Imhoff. Ashley D. Isaac. Brian A. Jacobson. Natalie Jean. Nicholas S. Johnson. Marissa Camino. Lindsay T. Kazen. Catherine E. Keener. Christine E. Keener, sorry. Jessica M. Kenny. Aaron D. King. Carol A. Kanaw. Joshua A. Kleinman. Stephanie A. Netner. Jack A. Lamson. Maria L. Lanzalotti. Jonathan A. Leach. Erica L. Levenberg. Tara Ann Levine, Jennifer R. Levy, Karen M. Lieberman, Alexander M. Lippa, James C. Lipscomb, Kevin B. Lowe, Lauren A. Long, Angela M. Luisi, Ashley F. Lukens, Kendra B. Luongo, Stephen A. Mack, Alexandra P. Mayetta, Russell L. Mars, Stephanie A. Malone, Lee A. Maneri, Irene Manilopoulos, Adrian M. Markison, Jacob Marshall, Michael J. Mattis, Danielle R. May, Ryan J. Mackesy, Kelly C. McDonough, Megan R. McLaughlin, Vanessa A. McClellan, Matthew J. Messina, Samantha R. Meyer, Robert S. Michelin, Sarah Elizabeth Moffat, Kevin E. Morgan, Alden D. Morse, Francesca N. Mount, Michael A. Mullally, Patrick J. Monroe, Megan K. Murphy, Andrew J. Murray, Caitlin J. Murray, Chelsea Lynn Naso, Monica A. Neves, Charles J. Nyland, Sarah E. Nowicki, James F. O'Connor, Ashley E. O'Keefe, Taylor L. Page. Stephanie A. Palumbo. Michael A. Papali. Christina T. Papavasilikas. Nicole A. Pappas. Nicole R. Pascal. Ashley S. Paul. Joseph D. Pelletier, Nicole A. Pellows, Kirsten C. Perez, Samantha Pesci, 
Valerie Rose Peralt, Thomas J. Pina, Catherine S. Place, Christopher F. Politano, Nathan R. Porter, Amanda J. Puglisi, Anthony J. Pusateri, Catherine Regan, Caitlin L. Revuelta, Michael J. Riccatelli, Andrew C. Rinaldi, Stephanie M. Rinaldi, Taylor M. Roberts, Jacqueline K. Rose, Brian M. Sarmiento, Jamie L. Schaefer, Stephanie Dana Schoenbrunn, Robin M. Schubert, Gina Helene Siami, Luke F. Segreto, Jamie L. Shalongo, Kimberly E. Shanahan, Rebecca F. Shanzer, Michael Shaw, Emily A. Sheehy, Jason M. Siegel, Bianca M. Simboli, Megan E. Simpson, Jennifer A. Skipper, Jason A. Slater, Andrew J. Spiro, Samantha J. Stenbeck, Joshua A. Stegas, Jacob P. Strykoff, Maxwell O. Svek, Kristen V. Swartz, Jennifer M. Swift, Kelsey D. Tarsinen, Glenn J. Taylor, Brittany M. Tomkowitz, Craig J. Tortorella, Samantha R. Trollis, Jenna M. Uliano, Felicia Valley, Abigail Van Dusen, Sarah A. Villanueva, Alicia L. Warshawski, Chelsea N. Weintraub, Catherine L. Weiss, Lee E. Weissman, Kieran, Kieran J. Wheeler, Francis R. Wibby, John O. Williams, Syra Zafar, Redmond D. Smudgen. Mr. President, it's my privilege to present to you the candidates for Bachelor of Arts degree from the School of Communications. Well, we know they can communicate. <laughs> by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining there too. Congratulations to all of you. It's my privilege to introduce Dr. Edward O'Connor, Dean of the School of Health Sciences. Will candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science from the School of Health Sciences please come to the platform? Emily E. Abercrombie, Santiana Avio,
Emily A. Aquista. Catherine V. Alessi. Christian G. Alvarez. Nicole M. Ambrosini. Heather E. Anderson. Nicole M. Anderson. Rebecca J. Anderson. Sarah E. Ancher. Ashley M. Armington. Charles K. Arnstein. Justin J. Aruk. Aaron Elizabeth Balka. Justine A. Balog. Emma J. Banks. Carol A. Baroli. Jillian C. Bassey. Michelle N. Baum. Kate E. Bayless. Julia M. Bean. Jeremy A. Beck. Amy E. Belanger. Ashley M. Bella. Mara M. Benink. Elena M. Bokikio. Larissa H. Bogdan. Nicolette C. Bowie. Mark D. Bombalicki. Margaret Bonner. Paige J. Bonner. Jacqueline Borchardt. Adam R. Boucher. Daniel Paul Boising. Mara L. Bransfield. Kelsey E. Britton. Michael A. Busso. Stephanie L. Cardenita. Colleen E. Casey. Christina L. Caterino. Heather A. Caulfield. Alessandra S. Servone. No Shambara. Kimberly A. Corsiari. Caitlin M. Clark. Sabrina Claudio. Laura J. Clemens. Laura A. Cobb. Samantha M. Kofsky. Jillian K. Cohen. Nicole A. Collins. Meredith L. Conway. Jacqueline D. Corcoran. Casey L. Costa. Megan J. Cousins. Robert Cazzarelli, Jr. Megan D. Cram. Brad S. Crerar. Katarzyna A. Qualina. Ashley A. Cunningham. Jessica J. Sobolski. Brittany L. Darling. Nicola A. Darst. Stephanie David. Sarah R. Davies. Kristen L. Davis. Christina M. DeBellis. Amanda J. DeLuise. Jessica L. Delvecchio. Andrea DeMeo. Stephanie J. DiPiero. Danielle DiCarlo. Emily Denise. 
Stephanie Doherty. Rachel L. Donaher. Kelly L. Doyle. Judy Duplessis. Cheryl A. Dufault. Mani Emanuel. Jillian P. Estes. Amy R. Felica. Kara E. Familaro. Jacqueline N. Fato. Anne Filion. Kristen P. Finocchi. Casey L. Fitzpatrick. Derek W. Fitzpatrick. Nicole E. Foley. Abigail I. Franco. Abigail is a recipient of the President's Scholarship Award and the Alumni Association Academic Achievement Award. Abigail is a health science studies major, biology and psychology minor who earned a 3.99 GPA. She is a member of the Pre-Health Profession Society. Previous honors include Dean's List and also a recipient of this year's Alumni Association Academic Achievement Award. Abigail will spend the summer preparing for the MCAT, the Medical College Admissions Test. She has many interests in medicine. Current possibilities include pathology, surgery, oncology, psychiatry, and anesthesiology. Abigail enjoys arts and crafts, going to music festivals, animals, traveling, swimming, cooking, camping, eating, and spending time with family and friends. Abigail is the daughter of Mr. Robert and Mrs. Amy Franco of White Plains, New York. She also has a brother, Adam. Congratulations. <laughs> Ashley B. Freund. Nicole K. Fuller. Leanne Gamarati. <laughs> Tiffany J. Garrison. Lauren E. Gately. Eileen M. Gerdy, The Alexandra H. Garrity. Jasmine S. Germain. Zohal Gazada. Daniel F. Gianfelice. Pamela L. Giordano. Emily B. Gold. Kelly Ann Golej. Latanya M. L. Gomez. Elaine Roxanne D. Gomez. Alex M. Gonzalez. Hillary Stern Good. Margaret M. Gordon. Jennifer Elise Gould. Hillary M. Graboff. Melissa R. Gramilia. Laura M. Grillo. Ross B. Granvold. Caitlin C. Guarino. Alexandra Marie Goodlevich. Leah Guys. Lauren M. Gustavin. Thomas D. Hacku. Christina L. Haddad. Janine N. Hajar. Catherine A. Harms. Amanda M. Hart. Megan J. Hasty. Nicole Davy High. Brianna E. Hyten. Alicia K. Henderson. Carrie Lynn Haying. Rachel A. Hoffman. Lauren Imperioli. Kylie Indivero. 
Kristen Lee Evaldi. Joelle E. Jacobson. Alyssa M. Jan. Nicholas M. Jilson. Kelsey A. Johnson. Michelle C. Johnson. Emily R. Kazmarczyk. Megan E. Kane. Alexandra M. Kafka. Sarah M. K. Leanne C. Kearns. Jessica C. Keeley. Ashley E. Kenyon. Catherine E. Curley. Jennifer L. Kessler. Megan E. Kimber. Mark A. Knapp, Jr. Dennis A. Kono. Kristen M. Kozlowski. Ariana P. Curtin. Jamie C. Lamb. Patricia A. Landino. Jessica C. Langton. Kristen M. Lasky. Corey J. Lever. Aaron K. LeCount. Jennifer L. Labassiere. Sarah E. Letterly. Ashley Elizabeth Lee. Sarah E. Leonard. Corey Mitchell Lewis. Jillian E. Lewis. Christina L. Lim. Peter O. Lind. Catherine T. Linane. Stephanie D. Lisi. Laura J. Lowell. Katrina M. Lord. Dina E. Lucchese. Brady A. Lore. Emily A. Lyons. Cherie M. McCree. Jesse M. Madorno. Heather N. Maffeo. Joseph T. Majincalda. Elizabeth J. McGuire. Elizabeth J. McGuire is a nursing major who earned a 3.99 GPA. She is a member of the QU Tiered Leadership Program in the Quinnipiac University Student Nurses Association. Previous honors and awards include the Benjamin and Juliet Trewin Award for Academic Excellence in Nursing, Dean's List, and Sigma Theta Tau, the International Honor Society for Nursing. Elizabeth is also a recipient of this year's President's Scholarship Award. After graduation, Elizabeth plans to pursue a nursing career in the neonatal intensive care unit at the hospital near her home in Westchester County. Elizabeth's hobbies include swimming and spending time with family and friends. Elizabeth is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Eugene McGuire of Larchmont, New York. She also has two sisters, Maggie McGuire and Katie McGuire, both QU alumni from the classes of 08 and 09, respectively. Congratulations. <laughs> Vinish Manchanda. <laughs> <laughs> Nina Manesh Mark J. Manning Kendra M. Margulies Alisa M. Marinella Elizabeth A. Marini Jennifer Marin Elizabeth R. Markard. Casey Ann Martin. Gina M. Martino. Rebecca E. Martin. 
Allison M. Massey. Allie M. Mattia. Barbara J. Matachewski. John F. McCarthy. Courtney E. McLean. Grace E. McCran. Megan L. McCready. Lauren M. McGrath. Alex L. McQuirk. Molly E. McNeil. Rachel A. Mebus. Amber L. Mello. Michael A. Marin. Christopher E. Mucci. Danielle M. Mezzi. Brittany A. Michael. Amanda E. Miller. Christopher R. Miller. Kevin L. Miller. Matthew E. Mills. Tina M. Monjardo. Megan L. Montaigne. Ashley I. Morales. Morgan A. Morales. Elizabeth M. Morin. Elizabeth A. Rosinski. Joseph C. Murad, Jr. Rachel E. Nash. Sarah L. Nash. Andrew J. Neumeister. Tran H. Nguyen. Melissa M. Noonan. Michelle C. O'Brien. Catherine A. O'Connor. Nicole M. Odorardi. Paul I. Ophili. Tanisha N. Oliver. Amanda M. Arengo. Julie P. Astuno. Kayla E. Palmieri. Alexandra A. Palumbo. Nancy Pan. Brianna K. Patain. Rashita N. Patel. Megan E. Pavia. Nicole Payne. Shannon S. Payne. Christina Peckink. Nicole L. Perez. Cassandra B. Perfetto. Emily J. Peterson. Heather M. Peterson. Sarah E. Phoenix. Mia C. Pasillo. Paulina Pekarska. Tracy L. Pina. Jennifer Marie Perello. Gina M. Piscatelli. Lauren E. Primerano. Catherine A. Proterra. Brittany P. Rainier. Lindsay N. Ravalis. Sheila J. Regan. Bernadette M. Reed. Marissa L. Reap. Roxanne R. Regini. Ashley M. Riley. Sarah M. Rinaldi. Amanda L. Rios. Michael T. Rivers. Jamie L. Robin. 
Jacqueline L. Rothman. Ashanti Christiana Sadler. Amanda M. Solera. Madeline Santiago. Amanda L. Sarno. Erica C. Sawicki. Aaron C. Scanlon. Jennifer E. Scarlett. Caitlin N. Schultz. Caitlin M. Schwer. Jessica L. Scott. Alexandra C. Shea. Corey M. Sherlock. Dana L. Sheriff. Alexandra M. Smith. Elizabeth E. V. Smith. Jordan E. Smith. Brian C. Solmini. Kirsten A. Summer. Kelly A. Sorrell. Pierre J. Soubrier. Nicole M. Spataro. Brittany Louise Splain. Ryerson J. Stinson. Brittany M. Strayhorn. Leah M. Sturdevant. Amanda R. Sullivan. Antonina M. Supa. Aria R. Swan. Shannon M. Sweeney. Matthew K. Taft. Sarah L. Taggart. Jessica M. Tallini. Brianne M. Tanzi. Kezia Testa. Jacqueline E. Terrian. Catherine R. Tomineo. Lindsey K. Torrey. Eric M. Torres. Melissa A. Trinks. Nicole A. Terciano. Corey A. Vancor. Justin T. Vanderhoof. Robert L. Van Nostrand. Natasha A. Varela. Jennifer Velez. Brittany C. Weeks. Samantha K. Willis. Kathleen T. Wilson. Stephanie L. Wong. Walter R. Woods. Brittany A. Weiskel. Brittany L. Young. Caitlin A. Zarek. Kristen M. Zito. Alyssa M. Zielinski. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science from the School of Health Sciences. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you.
It's now my privilege to introduce Derek Stanley, who will deliver the response of the class of 2011. Derek is a political science major from Nashua, New Hampshire. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. And thank you to President Leahy, the Platform Party, Public Affairs, Student Affairs, and the Commencement Committee and Facilities for putting on an unforgettable ceremony for the class of 2011 and our families. I'd also like to, big, to give a big thank you to Mitch Album for delivering an outstanding commencement address that will continue to inspire us as we begin our new careers. You're gonna be a tough act for me to follow today, but I'm gonna try my best. And on behalf of the seniors, I'd like to extend a great thank you and a few scattered apologies to the Senior Week Committee for making the last few days truly unbelievable. And finally, and most importantly, I'd like to give a huge thank you to our parents, our families, and all those who have given us the support that we needed and the encouragement to arrive here today. Your sacrifices will never, or have never gone unnoticed, and we are truly in your debt. So, I'm sure all the parents are glad that we no longer have, that they no longer have to pay tuition, but who in the class of 2011 believes that the last four years went by way too fast? Well, just under four years ago, our high school careers were coming to an end, but the next chapter in our lives was already underway. On a Friday morning in the summer of 2007, we arrived at the Commons Bridge. We were taken from our cars, quite abruptly I might add, and we were thrown into an environment which was as frightening as it was exciting. For most of us, it was the first time in our life that we were completely separated from our parents, from our siblings, from our friends, and basically from life as we knew it. It was our first taste of freedom and independence, and it was a lot to take in. Three months later, that brief glimpse of reality turned into what would be the beginning of an eye-opening, mind-altering, and life-changing experience, college. We sat in the same space on a Friday afternoon facing the library, a building which many of us would soon call home, a building which others among our class would soon hate with a burning passion, and a building which we will all begin to miss the moment we drive away from Quinnipiac this afternoon. Although it took us weeks and even months to become acclimated to this new campus, we were able to find our way around and learned a few valuable lessons along the way. For example, if you're in the CAF, but you're in a rush, don't get into Java John's line. <laughs> if you do, good luck explaining to your professor why you're half an hour late for class. Second, once those lovely trees on campus begin to bloom, you all know which ones I'm talking about, Avoid dorm road at all costs, or you'll be very, very sorry. Third, Quinnipiac has taught us the value of a dollar. For those of you who have lost your cue card on more than one occasion, you know that it costs 20 bucks for each replacement. It adds up fast. 10 replacements and $200 later, you think I would have learned my lesson, but I'm on number 11 right now. <laughs> Practical lessons like this have made our lives at Quinnipiac more manageable and have allowed us to develop a level of comfort on this campus, which was why the transition from into the real world might seem difficult right now. However, as we will soon learn, college is neither the beginning nor is it the end. It is simply a checkpoint, and it is one of many that we will reach towards, on our path towards whichever life goals we have chosen to pursue. Our individual careers will take us in different directions, bringing us to places that we can only dream of right now. But regardless of where we go, we will always be supported by the friendships and the connections that we have made at this school and by the confidence that we have received from our success thus far. And so, as we set out into the real world, we must remember the most important lessons that Quinnipiac has taught us. First, we must remember that sometimes things don't always work out the way we plan. But we must always remember that failure is never a barrier to success, but instead, it should be viewed as a rite of passage. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to ask a US president, a CEO, a famous author, a movie star, or even an artist how they arrived into their position, most would tell you that they did not become a success without making a few mistakes somewhere along the line. This isn't to say that you're going to fail at everything you do. 
because you would not be standing here today if that were the case. So maintain your confidence, learn from your shortcomings, and use that source of motivation to, pro to propel yourself to a new level of success. Second, regardless of the uh, score that you got on a standardized test and regardless of the grade point average on your transcript, never allow yourself to be judged based on numbers alone because each and every one of you is far, far more valuable than what is written on a piece of paper. Certainly your academic performance is important and you should be proud of what you've accomplished here during your four years and what you've learned at Quinnipiac. But the one thing that should always stand out, the one thing that has developed most during your four years here is your character. Your future employers and your coworkers will expect you to be prepared for your new responsibilities. But I guarantee you, your personality and your ability to work with others will bring you far beyond your academic successes. You will learn new skills along the way and you will develop new habits. But your character will always remain a, guard, a guiding force in your life and you will come to depend on it when all else has failed. Use it well and allow for its continued growth. Finally, and most importantly, we've learned not to take anything too seriously. I know that's difficult to say considering that most of us are still traumatized by finals week, but at the end of the day, as long as we have tried our best and have learned something new in the process, our life will have fulfillment. No matter how hard we work and regardless of how much time we've committed to a project or assignment, the final outcome won't always be what we expect, and we must accept that. In fact, imperfection can be a blessing in disguise because it is the force that allows our society to progress. If human beings were perfect, individuals would have nothing towards which they could aspire, and therefore, the world would cease to move forward. It is our unique perspectives on life and our abilities that have brought about some of the most profound discoveries and inventions of our time. So, just because one person tells you that you're wrong, have confidence in yourself, because your idea may be the next idea, the next step towards the revolutionary advancement for society. This graduating class has the potential that the world needs to confront the greatest challenges of our time. We are not expected to cure cancer, solve world hunger, or bring about world peace overnight. Great accomplishments come in time for all of us. Our college degree, as amazing as it is, should not be the greatest accomplishment of our life. So how do we continue to progress? The secret to finding that perfect balance between our ideal job and a favorable salary is by creating our own opportunities in life. We should never wait for the opportunity to come to us. Time and patience are required to become situated in a new environment. However, we must continue to adapt just as we successfully adapted to Quinnipiac. It is this adaptive capacity that will allow us to flourish. The world will challenge us on a daily basis and it will force us to make difficult decisions. But no matter how many obstacles it puts in our way, we will have the power to remove them one by one until nothing stands between us and the achievements of a lifetime. Congratulations, my fellow classmates, and thank you, Quinnipiac University, for an amazing four years. Thank you, Derek, and congratulations to all of our graduates. Would you please stand for the benediction? Would you please remain standing after the benediction until the platform party and all graduates have recessed? Following that, you are invited to join us in greeting the new graduates at a reception under the tents. As a suggested meeting point, arts and sciences and communications will be in the tent at my left and business and health sciences at the tent to my right. It is now my privilege to ask Rabbi Rena Judd, University Rabbi, to please come forward and deliver the benediction. Dear graduates, may it be your will to use the tools you have hereby earned to enhance your world. May concern for your fellows and betterment of your community be your motivating forces. May love rule supreme in your life. Dear God of all that is holy and sacred, may it be your will to safe keep these graduates, our children, our friends, our students. The ancient threefold benediction 
begs of God. Adonai Varechacha Vishmarechem, may God bless you and guard you. Adonai Ya'er Panav Alechem Veyichunechem, may God's face turn towards you. May God see you and enlighten you. Adonai Yasim Lechem Shalom, may God bestow peace upon you all. Go from peace, go towards peace, go in peace, and have a great life. <laughs>